simple, compound, complex. This will be the order we go in, um, so you should be able to kind of follow along with it. Your uh, note packet that you have, um, for the, I tried to break them down into the different sections. If you get lost as to where we're at, give me a quick uh, hand up so I can help redirect you. But they do go in chronological order. There are some things that might start at the bottom of a page and move on to the next page, and that kind of happens with the first page a little bit. But for the most part, should be pretty good with, uh, with being able to, to follow along. Um, here's why we're taking a look at this. And this would be where our notes are going to kind of start uh, picking up with. One of the issues that tends to pop up, and it was happening with your metamorphosis essays, and to be honest, it's going to happen with any kind of writing assignment, regardless of grade, whether it's an uh, English pen class, an honors, American lit class, whatever the case may be, a common issue that pops up is going to be lack of variety within your, your sentences. Um, and generally what happens is when people start to fall into traps, they tend to write mostly simple sentences. Simple sentences does not necessarily mean short sentences, but it's the same type of sentence over and over and over again. So if you're able to be aware of what those three general types are, simple, compound, and complex, which would be part that you need to write down, then that's going to help you vary your sentences in your writing. It's also going to help you figure out from time to time, if need be, which sentences then are going to be grammatically correct and which ones aren't going to be grammatically correct. Um, body paragraphs, like we did Oedipus Rex Metamorphosis. After you had a quote from the book, what was the next part that you had to do? Like that big, meaty, chunky part of your body paragraph. What did you have to do after you provide a quote? Well, you cited. What would be the next sentences that they could kind of come after it? You had to explain it. You remember how many sentences I wanted you to write for that part? Four to five. I had like five listed there. Um, some folks would do four, some would get up to five. What kind of sentences do you think people tend to write when you had to do four to five? Simple. Simple. Because if they were compound or they were complex, folks were going, wait a minute, those are longer sentences, that's more stuff I need to do. Why write uh, one compound sentence if I could break it up into two simple sentences? The reason is, when you start using the same type of sentence over and over and over again, it sounds choppy. There's not really that kind of natural flow of writing that variety. So I'll try to show you some ways in which you can certainly vary that order without feeling like you're doing twice the amount of work. And it's not to say that simple sentences are bad, because they're not. But it's just not something that you want to use over and over and over again. Um, simple sentence has the most basic elements that are going to make it a sentence. That's going to be a subject, so you've got a noun, what's the sentence about. You have a verb or a predicate, you know, where that action is taking place. And then that third part is going to be a completed thought. So you have subject, someone doing something or something doing something, and then you have that action that's taking place. That third part, completed thought, is from time to time when folks will get into a little bit of trouble. It was not unusual. Um, reading was the most common symbol that people used for part two for metamorphosis. Which one? The apples. Yep. So people would have their topic sentence using the apples as a symbol of Gregor's alienation or dehumanization. And then the next part, it would go specifically. And then people would have to write an example that would come in. So folks would write, some folks would grow specifically when Mr. Samsa throws apples at Gregor. That phrase is not a complete sentence because it's not a complete thought yet. So that would be an example where you do have a subject, Mr. Samsa, you do have a verb, throws, the apples, but you did not have a complete thought because if you walk up to someone and goes, when Mr. Samsa throws the apples at Gregor, person is going to go, well, what happened when Mr. Samsa threw the apples at Gregor? So just because it has subject verb doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be complete thought. That's the, the last part that you have to have included in there. Um, here are some examples, and I do want you to write the sentences down. We'll take our time with them. First one, Joe waited for the train. Subject being Joe, waited being the verb. Could also argue, not argue, but state that the fact that the train was late would be a simple sentence. So this would be number two in that list of five. The train being the subject, was being the verb.
Number three, Mary and Samantha took the bus. This one's a little bit different because you have a compound subject. You have two people, Mary and Samantha, but it is still a simple sentence. One real subject, the two of them, one verb, took the bus. Number four, I looked for Mary and Samantha at the bus station. In this case, our subject is now I. What is I doing? I looked for Mary and Samantha at the bus station. The fact that you have at the bus station, it's still a simple sentence. Bless you. And then number five, and I'll go back if we need to. Mary and Samantha arrived at the bus station early, but waited until noon for the bus. This is still a simple sentence. It's not compound. It's not complex. You do have a compound subject in that both Mary and Samantha, and you do have a compound verb in that they did two things, arrived and waited, but both of those are going back to Mary and Samantha at the beginning of the sentence. It's still a simple sentence. For number five, what would be a word that's in that sentence that would make some people go, wait a minute, that's a compound sentence? But. but. People see the word but, you know, you think and or so, but, you go, ooh, that's two sentences. What happens if you start reading right after the word but? What's our first word? Waited until noon for the bus. If what's on the other side of the word but, or and, so, whatever the case may be, if it's not a complete thought, if it's not a complete sentence, it doesn't have a subject and it doesn't have a verb, then you're not going to have a compound sentence. It's not unusual for some folks to put a comma here in between early and but because you feel like you're supposed to anytime you see those words. But that would not be the case because you still don't have a subject on the other side of the word but. Anyone need to take a look at any of the sentences? So whether you're dealing with the very first one up here at the top, um, Joe waited for the train, which is only, what, five words long? Or you take a look at the one that you just wrote for number five. They're both simple sentences, one subject, one predicate, that is it. Thing to keep in mind here, the use of compound subjects. And this starts at the bottom of your page, but it's also going to, uh, keep, well, the next one's going to start at the bottom and keep going. The use of compound subjects, compound verbs, and even prepositional phrases like at the bus station and other elements, they lengthen simple sentences, but it doesn't change them from being to changing it to a complex sentence. A lot of people think of simple sentences as often being short, and I'd say this is pretty typically the case. If you use too many simple sentences right after another in succession, it can make the writing seem kind of choppy. Um, and it can prevent it from having a nice, even, smooth flow to it. So this is one of the main reasons you want to vary the sentence structure. You don't want it to sound like the, uh, the first grade book that my daughter's coming home with, you know, where it's like, bury the duck. Bury the duck took the bus. Bury the duck's bus got stuck in mud. You get that same repetitive structure over and over again. You don't want that to happen with yours. This is going to be at the bottom of the page, but it does go on to uh, the next page as well. Simple sentence can be referred to also as an independent clause. Um, independent meaning that it can exist on its own as a sentence, or it could be part of a longer sentence like a compound or a complex sentence, which we're going to get to here in a little bit. So a simple sentence could be a building block to something else. If, uh, if you use too many essays, or excuse me, use many simple, sen uh, simple sentences in an essay, you could consider revising some of those into compound complex sentences, which we'll get into here a little bit later. Simple sentences aren't bad. Simple sentences over and over again, that's when you get into problems. Compound sentences over and over again gets you into problems. Complex sentences over and over again gets you into problems. The important thing is you just want to try to mix it up, have a variety. Reads better. Sounds nice. Questions. Part of what we're going to start doing then is can you identify simple sentences, can you identify compound, can you identify complex. So if you get confused between or among the three of them, make sure you let me know. Alright, we did simple, now we'll do compound.
Compound sentence means let's see if we can join again. There we go. Um, refers to a sentence that's made up of two independent clauses or two complete simple sentences connected to one another with what's called a coordinating conjunction and or so but those types of words and we'll get into a little bit more detail about them. I'm guessing you've probably heard this before but coordinating junctions are easy to remember if you think of the word fanboys or the two words fan and boys. Getting ready for my next slide. It's an acronym for and nor fan, but or yet so boys. What do you think is a pretty likely quiz question? You're pretty good. You're thinking like a teacher now. So, again, doesn't mean every time that you use these words, it's going to be used as a coordinating conjunction, but those would be the ones that you can use to link two sentences together. For simple sentences. For fanboys, Kevin. So, yeah. Tommy, what's like a sentence? Like, just say a sentence. Tommy, what? make up a sentence. It's not making one up. We had that from the last one. Okay, we'll go with it. Train was late. The blood was late. Well, I'm already writing train, so. So what did the boy do since the train was late? How about that? The boy chased. What's the S? So, we'll go back to it. So the boy chased the train. Yep. See, quick boy. Very. Who's faster, you or Zach? Here. Zach. Slagle? Yeah. Slagle. If Luke were here, what would he be saying? Oh. He'd, be he'd be, yeah, he'd be the fastest. No, Luke knows I'm fast. Okay. Um, of these, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so, which one would make sense to link it together? So. Yeah, probably so. So the train was late, comma, so, and this would become lowercase, the boy chased the train. Wouldn't it be the boy was late? Yeah, why would the boy chase the train was late? I don't know. Tommy made up the sentence. We're just running with it. Try not to make him feel I said bad. The boy was late. <laughs> well, you said the train first. I said boy. Okay. Pretend it says early. Let's go with that one. Yeah. Of these, which ones do you think you'd be least likely to use? Nor yet. yet. But. Yeah. Oh, I think but you would use a fair amount. For, for this sentence? Well, no, I mean like in general. Oh. Nor. Nor. My guess would be for and nor would probably be the two. Um, a word that people like to use as a coordinating conjunction, and it is not one, is another B word. Because. Because. Because is not a coordinating junction. You can't use because to link the two together. For could take the place of because. The boy chased the train, comma, for the train was early. early. Thank you for not saying late. So if you, had a sent, if you had two simple sentences that you were linking together and you wanted to use the word because, for would be the one that you would go with. Um, nor, would kind, nor would probably be, again, I think one that would be fairly less likely to use. Um, Logan did not want to take his quiz on Monday. 
nor did Logan want to take the quiz on Tuesday. Uh, so it would kind of be like and, but you have a negative concept that's going together with it. If you had a word, there's an H word that people will sometimes try to use as a coordinating conjunction. How? Could be hence, how, ever, yeah. yet would take its place. I didn't study for my vocabulary list number six quiz. Yet, I feel confident that I did very well. So those would work. So fanboys, any of those, you can use to link two complete, two simple sentences together, comma, um, and it won't be a run-on sentence or comma splice, anything like that. All right, so, oops, can't write all those down. So here would be some examples. This will take a little bit longer because they're a little bit lengthier. Um, what I did is you have in white the first independent clause or simple sentence, and then in uh, yellow or gold would be the second one. So, Joe waited for the train. You could say separate sentence would be the train was late, but is the conjunction that's putting it together. If you forget to put the comma, you have a grammatical error. It is a run-on sentence at that point because you don't have that punctuation to break it up. So, Joe waited for the train, but the train was late. I looked for Mary and Samantha at the bus station, but they arrived at the station before noon and left on the bus before I arrived. Notice the word and is there. It's not combining two sentences, so you don't have to worry about the comma. I think some elementary grade school English teacher scarred you into feeling like you have to put a comma every time you see the word but and or not every single time. I'll leave the second sentence and just get rid of the first one. Going up to sentence number four, Mary and Samantha left on the bus before I arrived, comma, so I did not see them at the bus station. Anyone need me to go back to sentence one or two? I'll leave this up here for a minute and then I'll go back. So again, compound sentence. On each side of the comma and the conjunction, you would have a simple sentence that could stand on its own. You're just putting the comma and conjunction together to combine those two sentences. The words that you can use, um, again, the seven of them, you think of fanboys, for, and, nor, but, or, yet, so. You use those words with the comma, you can link those two together, no questions. What's that? I'll go back to two to show that one. It's just one of the sentences that you're missing. Yeah, but I would have them So two was I looked for Mary and Samantha at the bus station, but they arrived at the station before noon and left on the bus before I arrived. They're similar. I looked for Mary and Samantha, and then Mary and Samantha they arrived. So. I'm more worried about you knowing what they are and why they are rather than the order that they're going to. Um, of the coordinating conjunctions, which one do you think gets used most often? It'd be between and and but. My guess is and. If you were told that you had to write a compound, uh, compound sentence, my guess is and would get used most often. And I'm thinking in the way of the, your essay goes, you have these sentences of explanation and you combine them together. So you go and, and, and. Um, the issue with compound sentences is you go, hey, I need to write longer sentences. I'm just going to combine them together. If you constantly are using and or but, 
then it can start to sound a little repetitive and, and, and played out as well. Tommy? Yeah. Thank you. Devin, is that what you needed to? Can you start a sentence using and, or, so, but? I wouldn't. Some will say no. Some will say sometimes. For now, it's I would just avoid it. And there's, and there's a big difference between the way we speak and the way we, we write. Um, when, you, when you speak, it's kind of like a rough draft. Now, some of us really do a rough draft where we don't think before we speak. Others, hopefully, you think about a little bit more. But I'm not going to pretend to say that every time I say something, it's in quote-unquote proper English. But if you're writing it down, you have the ability to revise it, you have the ability to think about it, then yeah, it should be a little bit, it should be better than that. Um, but if you go, but Mr. Kane, I think we're not going to go rephrase that. You know, you can't start off with the word but. Tommy, you good? Devin, you're good? Okay. All right, so coordinating conjunctions are useful for connecting sentences. But compound sentences can be overused. Hey, just used a compound sentence right there. Coordinating conjunctions can indicate some type of relationship between ind independent clauses. They sometimes don't indicate much of a relationship and or so, that kind of stuff. Complex sentences give you more of a relationship, which we'll get into here in a little bit. So you have overuse written at the bottom of your page. Um, this next part here is where the uh, top of the next page starts. The word and, for example, only adds one independent clause to another without indicating how those parts are actually related to one another in a logical form. If you have too many compound sentences that use and or but, it can then really start to weaken the overall writing. Anytime you're overusing a word, it's going to hurt you. It just limits the style. And you think about people who will say, you know what I mean, all the time. Or start off with, you know, saying so, so, so. It gets pretty old very, very quick. Um, clear and more specific relationships can be established through the use of complex sentences. Most people will tell you from a reading standpoint, those are probably the best sentences to go with. They also can be sometimes the trickiest. Are we good? Adam, you okay? Yeah. All right. Complex sentences we're going to start discussing here. Complex sentence made up of an independent clause and one or more dependent clauses are connected to it. A, there we go. Dependent clause is similar to an independent clause or a complete sentence, but it lacks one of the elements that would make it a complete sentence. I don't have this written on your note sheet, but underneath this part where you had to write in the word elements, I want you to write specifically, specifically, dependent clauses are not a complete thought. Specifically, you're writing this yourself. Just underneath, like in between where, uh, see where you wrote the word elements? Just write it underneath where you wrote elements. Specifically, dependent clauses are not a complete thought. Dependent clauses are not a complete thought. They have a subject, they have a verb, but they're not a complete thought. When Logan tied his shoes, there's a dependent clause. I have a subject, Logan. I have a verb, tied his shoes. I don't have a complete thought. Because I don't know what happened when he tied his shoes. He gave himself a concussion. Dependent what? Dependent clause. Or what do we write on? I'm sorry. So underneath, like where you just wrote your last part, I would just write specifically dependent clauses lack a complete thought or are not a complete thought. 
They have a noun, they have a verb, but they're not a complete thought. Here's some examples of dependent clauses, and these will be the where we leave off here. I want to get these down first. Because Mary and Samantha arrived at the bus station before noon, while he waited at the train station, after they left on the bus, these would all be example of dependent clauses. They all have a subject, they all have a verb, but if you were to just write that down, there would still be unanswered questions. Because Mary and Samantha arrived at the bus station before noon, we don't know what happened. And we'll pick up with this tomorrow. You too.